I gotta warn you, I'm feeling pluckish. <laughs> this is when I'm at my most dangerous. It's drawing with Bearheart, kids. Uncle Bearheart is back. Uh, for those of you who don't know by now, most of the videos I do uh, are technically actually spells in digital. There's usually a form, a pomp, a set, a setting. Today we're going to kind of freehand it a little bit. This is to answer some questions that I get that I think are, are worth answering. Not that your questions aren't worth answering, it's just some of them I, I either can't answer yet or I can only answer in a certain context and uh, I don't think I'm ready yet to answer certain certain questions or I think I've done videos about them so many times that it's just to the sense of redundancy. So uh, I can't per se that this is going to be any particular topic. I mean, it might turn into something completely different. I don't know. So we're going we're gonna to freeball it and just kind of see what comes out. One important question that I get a lot, something that I hint at, something that I do mention quite often, is the crucifixion mystery. The crucifixion mystery has nothing to do with Christianity. I'm sorry, you fucking miscreants do not own the crucifixion any more than the Jews own the Kabbalah. And I don't like really either of you. Uh, it's mainly because you're pompous, self-righteous, and the dirty things you do to little kids. Um, I, I make no apologies. So to really set the record straight and hopefully drive yet another nail into the heart of Christianity, uh, let me show you where the, cru where the crucifixion actually comes from. It has nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing. In the sense that the Jesus story has perverted what is a powerful initiation process for all people. And what it did is it externalized the story or the hero figure that is Jesus instead of internalizing the process for any man or woman to go through, the externalization of the story of Jesus took it out of the hands of mere mortals and placed it in the hands of someone who was technically the son of God, which makes it near impossible, which is the point. Christianity made it so that you need to beg, plead, you know, whine and squeal at the feet of their black robed clergies with their black hearts and beg someone to save you when in fact honestly the true savior is the inner champion inside you uh, being an initiate a member of the actual cult of St. George myself um, St. George being a powerful solar figure in some of the older stories and this is shit you're not going to get anywhere else some of the older stories after Jesus, in the Gnostic and then in the cults of Jesus, which had nothing to do with Christianity, Jesus survived the crucifixion, moved to France, took up the sword, and the figure we know as St. George is a Christian figure, is a Christ figure, not, not a, a, uh, a Catholic, not a soldier of Christianity, but a soldier who fights the inner fight, the champion fight for the rest of humanity. And sometimes, yes, sometimes that means picking up the actual physical sword and actually physically plunging it into the heart of some dickhead, you know, tyrant or thug of a tyrant. That's what it means. So in some of those stories, the solar figure was Jesus, was St. George. The point is the solar figure is inside of you. That solar figure in those veneration stories served to help you bring that out, to acknowledge what is inside you and to bring it into manifestation into the physical plane. And we'll talk about some of that too. But I want to show you where this happens on the tree of life because this is an important part we have the solar symbol solar 
That is the sun. Now, I'm going to draw a cross, okay? Can anyone see that? Here we go. I know, I'm asking a question and I can't hear you answer, so I'm going to assume that's yes. <laughs> Now, here's an interesting thing. We have the cross. Oh, the good wooden cross, that old wooden cross, that big splintery hunk of wood. There we go. Check that out. There we go. Great, great cross there. Now, here's interesting. Here is the sun in the center of the cross. Hmm, where have we seen that before? Ah, here we go. The Uranian crown. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Almost like the crown is made of thorns. Ooh. Wow. Hey, look. Here's the moon. The lunar energy. The sandals... In Kabbalist high magic, the moon is represented by sandals because it is the space between the physical world and the astral world, meaning that the physical body had not yet touched down on the physical world, therefore had not yet been grounded. But in the crucifixion story, Jesus is joined, which is used in the terminology of a nail. His feet are grounded in the astral world. Interesting point here, because the cross itself is joined or cemented in the physical world. That would mean that Jesus is a solar entity, an astral, sacrificial spirit who joins their interpersonal story with the physical world, meaning an astral presence cannot take form in the physical world, an intelligence without a physical body. Their feet, where they stand, where they live, is in the astral world. They need a conduit a conduit to anchor into the physical. Guess what? You are the conduit. You are the cross for which makes real this story. Wow! Is it, is it, is it coming to you yet? Do you see? Do you see this? Jesus' hands are joined with Mars and Jupiter. They're joined. The nails are joined. In his hands, he holds the power to destroy and the power to create, the power to harm, the power to heal, the power to break, the power to make whole. These are the two great powers that all humanity has. This is the spear of Mars, which punctured the side of Christ. The Marsarian spear. The wounding tool that made the space to make whole with the power of Jupiter. Jupiter is the mediation cup. The cup that caught the blood of Christ. The cup that caught the purifying blood of Jesus. That is the cup of mediation. The cup of beneficiality. The cup of friendship. That is the cup that's passed to all. So, if you are a solar figure, not only do you heal the wounds but you knit back together the space that, it, that, that was created in the wounding process. The blood given form. This is a Saturnine style energy. The blood flows out free form. 
caused by the spear of Mars. The blood is given form by a container and then used as a sacrament to bring people together. Does it make sense? Does this make sense? I mean, this is a huge concept, but it really needs to be finally explored. I am the only person that I know that understands this. The only person, because I am legitimately part of cults that have long thought to have been forgotten. This is the crucifixion mystery. You're not going to go to any other Kabbalah seminar and plunk down 10,000 bucks to get, you know, swindled. I'm going to give it to you for free. And there it is. You have it. Send me money. <laughs> I mean, do, do you get the connotation with this? The heart and soul lie here. In other terms... I'm really not the world's best artist, but, you know, the flaming heart, right? There's Jesus, the Son right there. Here, there. Here, there. One more time. Here, there. I think it's pretty clear. I think it's really, really clear. I don't know. I'm trying to think of any other way that I can't, you know, I don't want to get into like a full three-hour discussion, which I have with it. But, I mean, it should really appear what I'm talking about. All right? Pluto, we're, we're, we're going to avoid that completely. I really shouldn't even draw on it. I drew it as a reference point for something I'm going to do here in a little bit. Uh, technically, Pluto should never really be drawn on the uh, Tree of Life because to draw it is to disavow it because it is the invisible energy. Uh, and no, I don't know. I, I get the other question I get a lot is, shouldn't Pluto be here as the crown of the Tree of Life? I can't tell you how unbelievably fucking wrong that is. I, I just, if someone could find me the individual putting that information out, please do. Because uh, I would love to figure out why, where in the realm of creation this idea has, because I, I honestly do look into it, and I can't for the life of me figure out what, the uh, justification is what the idea that Pluto, uh, me fully knowing its 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 work and its position, uh, who would think that it could be in the Uranian sphere? I just I, I don't get it. Like these two should 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 switch uh, because this is the crown of heaven. Uh, no, <laughs> absolutely not. So, should Pluto be here? I'm going to write it out for you. Hold on, wait. There, there. I spelled it out for you. Right there. Right here. Here, let me put an arrow. Right there. There you go. Right there. So, anytime you say, hey, Bearheart, should Pluto be here? I'm going to redirect you. Just say this out loud. Really loud. There you go. Here's your answer. So, Bearheart, should it be here? No. Nope. I'm going to refer to it right here. Okay? <laughs> no! <laughs> okay? No! Just no. N-O. No! Again, Pluto's one of those things that's like an inner circle mystery. In my tradition, it is an inner circle mystery, and I can't... I, there's not very much I can get into it. I... Oh, man, I want to, though. Uh, for the guy I told this to uh, a little bit ago, uh, I'll give you more information uh, because I think, I think you're ready for it. But there is a quote in the opening of the Watchtower which talks about a formless fire 
a voice from a void, that is about the only clue I can give you about Pluto. And Pluto's position within the Tree of Life is absolutely 100% solid. Don't fuck with Pluto. Don't fuck with its position. Don't try to tell it something it's not because it'll be what it wants to be and not what you want it to be. So, again, should Pluto be here? There we go. End of story. I'm never going to answer the question. That's it. Done. I've answered that question. It is fully, completely cemented. Done. That, that is, I'm not even going to argue it. Um, but if someone could, could find out where this information is coming from, because I can't even find out where anyone is saying this, other than this one individual who I'm sure it's the same individual that has questioned this or has sent me this question, God, 15 times. And I've tried to go into it, but it just, I, I don't know. Sometimes it's, it's like talking to a brick wall. And so I just, there's my final answer. Just done. I'm not even going to accept it. Let's talk about Saturn. Uh, I think I cleared up the beginnings. The beginnings of the crucifixion mystery. There is more. And actually the next part's going to get into it a little bit. Um, but I want people to, to kind of have a deeper understanding. This is also going to lead into the uh, Lesser Banishing Ritual, the Pentagram, which I will begin to release. So this is kind of a, a impromptu primer for this. Let me get to a new page because my drawings tend to get pretty big. Okay. Exciting. All right. So let's talk about the influence of Saturn. And let's talk about the three primary grand crosses that make up the physical reality that we understand. All within the tree of life. Strange. Okay. Um, let me do this really quick. This is the kingdom, Terra, the Earth, all right? It's part of this. Let me draw it out really quick. Um, there are three crosses. So, cross one. Cross two. Cross three. One, two, three. Now, let's talk about the influence of Saturn. Saturn, as I've discussed in the Saturn 9 video, is the influence of time and space upon the physical world. That is the constraints, the structure, the border, the foundation for which all physical work manifestation into reality takes place. Without the power of Saturn, there is no such thing as reality. Okay? Your scope is limited for a reason. It is specialized. It is not dulled, but brought to a fine point. You need to flip this on its head. Sure, can you access all the astral information, all the planetary information? No, because it would come like like a crescendo down on you and drowned you with all that information. You and the physical body are limited to your scope. You can widen that scope. You can awaken those astral powers in you, but those astral powers become stronger because like a giant dead weight, you have to lift them off you. And if you want to get stronger, you have to put yourself in resistance. Resistance, time under tension is what builds power. You must face opposition to get stronger. Okay? Whatever opposition that is. You can throw out, well, sometimes in Tai Chi, I redirect my energy and the energy of my opponent. Well, that's fine. You can fucking redirect the energy of your opponent all you want. But you must learn. You must work to develop that skill. And that means time under tension. Learning to do that. That takes time and you learn it in a space. Okay? Alright? Don't throw out these pseudo-intellectual nonsensical 
uh, examples that you don't have to spend time against opposition. For you to develop that deflection, redirection skill, it takes time. It takes effort. I roll with high-level Japanese jiu-jitsu and Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighters on a regular basis and trust me I can redirect a lot of energy and it takes time it takes energy it takes sweat it takes effort and practice so to hone your skills you have to be in an area that is hard to deal with the physical world because of the time and space constraints are hard to deal with welcome to making yourself a better person so with the circle of the kingdom or circle of the earth we have a cross an intersection of flesh and spirit okay an intersection of of unlimited possibility because you in fact are the solar center of your own micro universe so you are right here you are the center the king the queen this is the prima hill from which you rule from of your own microcosmic sphere of influence okay now your influence is limited by the Saturnine circle that is why it is self-contained. You have limits and borders that you must learn to use to your advantage. Next, we go to the higher self. The higher self, the Christ, the solar, the St. George, the sacrificial, the true giving of yourself to support and help others. This is the true solar symbol, which I'll draw out here very, very soon. People say, oh, that's a Celtic cross. It is a Celtic cross. It's a solar cross. The example here is that you have, because of your higher self, you attained your higher self, you are now able to move past just the physical barriers. You have gathered the necessary strength to grow past your limitations. Wow! It's like this is magic or something, dude. Oh, you got to be my homeboy now, bear heart, bro. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, <laughs> this is your solar self. You are growing past your once perceived limitations. There we go. Why is no one talking about this? Guess what? Because they don't know. They don't know, all right? I am a true magician, 20 plus years of experience, and I am sharing this with you so you do know. So you do know, you can take this and apply this information to yourself, okay? Then we move into the highest self. This is like the God self, the goddess self, the highest supreme. Guess what? You are no longer restricted by Saturn. You are above Saturn. You are above Saturn the Saturnine energy current. And I'm sorry, that's not going to happen while you have a physical body. This is your attainment while you have a physical body. See the circle? Now, I want you to do an experiment. I want you to look down, and I want you to punch yourself really hard in the knee, just as hard as you can, okay? When your fist makes contact with your physical knee, you will understand that you have a physical body, okay? Just just punch yourself as hard as you can right now. When that happens, don't actually do it. I, I'm going to get lots of angry emails. This, this experiment shows that you have a physical body, okay? This circle represents the physical constraints of Saturn, which is part of the physical body. People are like, oh, but I hate the physical body. Well, you know what? Then have sex more, okay? If you don't like your physical body, use it in a way that gives you pleasure, Okay? and use it to build the things that you want. I, I'm really, I, I'm okay. I, I'm a hedonist. I am so okay with people fucking. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, because that is part of the work of your physical body. Sitting around in denial of self, denial of want, den, uh, you know, denial of desire, is just plain idiocy. If you want to eat rice and live in a cave, you know, fine, you can do that. If that brings you pleasure. If you're that nihilistic or nihilistic, and just that, you know, awkward, fine, you can do that. And if you're that awkward, whatever, I'm not against you. I'm just saying you might want to venture into, I don't know, the gifts of the physical world. And that is pain and pleasure. There is the paradox of that, okay? Pain from suffering, pain from working, pain from striving and sacrificing to create something. And then pleasure, 
engaging in sex, drinking, eating, whatever. This is, you know, you are rewarded for having a physical body. It's not all just pain and misery and angst unless you create your reality that way. All right? God. Ugh. So, your God self is without constraint. It's above it. But you need to be in your astral world to fully activate this. Your aim, while you have a physical body, while you have the circle around you, all right, is to activate your, your, your higher self. That is the nature of it. Uh, your God self comes much, much, much later and is, a, is reflective of the work you do in the physical world. Okay? So, where do these crosses exist, you ask? Well, let's go back to our good friend, the Tree of Life. So, here we have cross one. It should be really obvious. One. Well, okay, there we go. Should be pretty obvious. Now, let's do the solar cross. So, we're going to move up. Up. Up again. Okay. There we go. There's a big cross. Now, we're going to kind of stencil in really lightly Pluto. Right here. All right. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Oh, my God. <laughs> there it is. <gasps> but that's where the solar center is. Crazy. Oh, there it is. Right there. There it is. Amazing. It's like... These planets, these planetary influences, have powerful effect on the astral world. One might, wink, wink, start to look at these planetary influences, understand them, how they work in the astral world. Let's, let's, let's say it again. One might, wink, wink, think that these planetary natures, these influences, have profound effects on the astral world. Hmm. Just saying. Let's play with this a little bit, because I like doing this. Oh, that might mean something. Oh, yeah. That might mean something, indeed. Hey, did you know that part of the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram that the uh, way tradition that I was passed on to me performs it, uh, that it is the planetary realm of Venus that through a year's time makes a pentacle around the sun as proof of the mother's love of Venus protecting her children from outside unwanted influences. If this is the sun and this is Venus... Uh-oh. And did you know there's an opposite pentagram that is applied by the lower spirits? Oh, wow. Now we're getting into some deep shit. Now we're getting in it. Because not only... Do we have the six-sided star? Now we have the ten-sided star. Six and ten. That is the mathematical formula onto which all Sumerian math is based off of. Look it up. Six and ten. There is pure sacred geometry. Ever heard of the Makurba? It's like the Makurba is in the astral realm. Weird. There's your vehicle. <laughs> People are like, well, how do I create the Makurba? You don't create it, you're already in it. Oh, I'm not mad. I'm just... Oh, man. I'm not mad. I just... There you go. There we go. I just There's so many concepts here that I don't want to fly off on a tangent. I just want you to begin to look at them. Oh, here's that other cross. There we go. 
this one, right there. So we have cross 1, cross 2, cross 3, right there. There you go. There we go. Definitely stuff to think about. Stuff to start to apply. This is going to be huge. This this diagram right here, in the way that the lesser banishing ritual of the uh, pentagram is performed. This is just gigantic, gigantic. Uh, when I start getting into that here very very soon. Um, you'll really kind of understand what this means. Uh, the star chamber, everything. The lesser banishing ritual is a, is a ritual of extreme importance. Yeah, just massive amounts of importance. And the nature of the tree of life is going to come to, well, not to sound redundant, is going to come to life in ways that are just going to blow your fucking mind. I guarantee it. You are just going to, and when I start releasing the wheel of Ezekiel, the astral portal that it is, and the various intonations and sounds and whirlings, um, it's going to change, it's going to change your perception of magic and it's going to change how you are activated on the astral world. Um, you can start to use this particular uh, endogram over your chest center while you perform the spiritual armor. I would recommend that you do that, uh, or at least place it on there. The Templars, when they wore, I forget what they're called now, I don't know, tabards? Someone, uh, if I'm wrong on that, somebody uh, let me know. But, um, you know, they have the belt and whatnot, and uh, they would have the cross, the big red cross over it. You know, they, they had their It's a sword, you know. I don't, wow, that's a horrible sword. Jesus, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here to kill you. Okay, that guy. All right. Um, this cross was absolutely reflective of this. Okay, well, maybe, okay. But, you know, I don't know. After they became, you know, the militant arm of the Catholic Church, Maybe they weren't, you know, I'm here to kill you so much. But this and the symbol of the cross, it didn't, it meant very little. I mean, it was, say, it was saying that they were, they were soldiers of the solar influence, okay? They had more understanding of this, but they were still kind of slightly duped. The uh, cult of St. George also utilizes this ritual wear. I, I have robes in this. But um, it is because you are placing yourself as the solar center of your own world, that you are the mighty defender of that world and also of that reality of the larger collective group that you are part of. And sometimes, somewhere soon, we'll get into that. So, just some ideas uh, to answer some questions. Uh, really, I just hadn't done a video in a while, and I wanted to get the juices going and really just kind of get people prepared visually for what is about to concur. So uh, I hope that answers some questions, and I actually hope it uh, creates some questions for you. We'll let it go at that.